Hello. If you happen to have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, I invite you to open the King James scriptures and go with me into the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 8. If you do not know where the Proverbs, of Proverbs are, get the scriptures and open it somewhere in the middle and you will find the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is right after the book of Psalms. If you have what is known as a Bible in your house, and it is not the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, you're going to notice some very big and glaring differences. See, this, this is the authorized version of the scriptures. These are the scriptures. Anything else but the King James scriptures are merely but a Bible, a collection of books. While this is given by inspiration, inerrant, perfect. And if you do not have an authorized version of the scriptures, We will be reading Proverbs chapter 8. And of course, if you have the scriptures, please follow me along. Proverbs chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry? and understanding put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, Understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. A fool, according to the scriptures, is one who saith in his heart that there is no God. You can reference that in Psalm 14 and Psalm 53. Okay, that is the definition according to the scriptures, what a fool it was. Okay, here, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The 
fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. If you wish, hold your place here and go quickly to the book of Job. The book of Job is right before the book of Psalms. And we are going to look at one verse in Job chapter 28. Job chapter 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, the Lord, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Go back to Proverbs chapter 8 and look at verse 13 again. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way in the froward mouth do I hate. But see, they out there who call themselves Christians, they try to convince you that God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is this big fluffy teddy bear sitting in heaven weeping because you just won't believe and that he's okay with sin and he doesn't judge you. And doesn't that sound like a little G God that you would like to invest some time in, right? But is that the God of the scriptures? Let's continue. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness, that's verse 18. What are these riches? Okay, what are these riches? Look at verse 10 and verse 11. Durable riches. Verse 10 and 11. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be, be desired are not to be compared to it. Verse 19, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the mists of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the death, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, 
when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, created the heaven and the earth and all things therein. Only God could do that. It's not this millions and trillions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. Nothing exploded. And after millions and millions and millions of years, nothing formed something. And from something came a little sniveling piece of snot, which you... <laughs> evolved from. <laughs> Look at verse 5. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. If you believe that We've, we have evolved from monkeys, which evolved from fish, which evolved from a snot that came out of water, that evolved from nothing exploding and creating something. You, dear friend, are an absolute fool. And with charity of the Church of the Living God, I say unto thee, you're an idiot. You are an absolute idiot if you think this, everything, the earth, the trees, the animals, the fishes, <laughs> you yourself, you think that came about over millions, billions, and trillions of years of evolution. You're a fool. You're an absolute fool. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, created you, me, and everything. You say, uh, you say unto me, prove it to you. Um, I, I think we just saw the proof. Well, I don't believe the scriptures. Yeah. Because you're a fool. But that's what this video is about. Let's continue this from verse 32 now on to verse 36. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise. And refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Waiting at the post, posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. You might be saying, oh, I don't, I don't hate Jesus. He was a good teacher. He was a good social activist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is he God? Or was he just a prophet? Hmm? 
or just a good teacher? Hmm? How do you know he was God? How do you know he was the Father? And uh, what? Is he one of three gods that make one God? <laughs> no. Of course not. That's called Trinitarianism. Uh, if you are seeing me, I am not a Trinitarian. That is satanic heresy. Okay? If you reject Jesus Christ, you love death. You love death. If you reject Jesus Christ. Now, go to Isaiah. Isaiah, okay, here, here's how it works. Proverbs, okay. Ecclesiastes, that's how you pronounce that. Solomon's Song or the Song of Solomon, then is the book of the prophecy of Isaiah. Okay? Go to Isaiah chapter 28. And that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. We will read verses 14 on to verse 22. Okay? Isaiah chapter 28 verses 14 on to verse 22. Now, there is something called dispensations, which um, if you are watching this and you are not of the Church of the Living God, you don't understand the first, first thing of what that is. But uh, very simply, The book of Isaiah is written onto the Jewish people. But we today, right here, right now, that means you, there is something that you can learn from reading something that was written onto the Jewish people, written for the Jewish people, many, many, many years ago. Okay? Okay? That's as simple as it could be said to you. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 14 on to verse 22. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. You can't come to grasps with the grace that is there. That our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures to pay for your sins. To bring you on to himself by his grace. You reject that. You are, you have basically made a covenant with death and with hell you are at agreement. You don't love the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for you. You hate him. There's no, see, there's no middle ground, dear friend. There is no option C, okay? You're either on the Lord's side or you're not. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no middle ground. 
you're either saved or you're lost. Okay? Let's continue now. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Now, this verse 16 is a reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, let's continue. Verse 17, judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hail and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. Where are you going to go when you die? Hmm? Where are you going to go? Oh, I'm just going to lie in the ground and be worm food. <laughs> Your physical body, maybe, yes. But see, man... That includes male, female. We are made in the image of God. What does that mean? You, dear friend, have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? That's what that means. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body. And right now, as you're sitting there, walking around, doing dishes, doing the laundry, or just sitting there looking to cause trouble, you're sitting there, you have a body, and within your body, you have your spirit and soul is within your body. Okay? But see, once you are saved, we're seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So we are connected. But getting a little ahead of myself there, and I don't want to do that for you. Okay? Let's continue this. From verse 19 on verse 22. For the time that it goeth from the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. What you believe other than what comes from the scriptures, what you believe is truth, dear friend, isn't going to save you. Think you're a good person, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Verse 21 on verse 22. The, for the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Now, therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. A consumption. A consumption, even determined upon the whole earth. See, what's going to happen, my dear friend, is very soon a certain body of persons, a person is a spirit, soul, a body, are going to suddenly disappear. 
And you think things are bad now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just wait until this certain group of persons disappear. And if you are of my countrymen who are so foolish to think that Trump has this Cyrus anointing, that America is this great nation that's going to endure forever, again, you are a fool. You are a fool. Now, take your scriptures and go like somewhere in this area of the scriptures and open it. And you want to find the book of Acts, okay? The book of Acts is within the collection of books called the New Testament, okay? And it is as follows. The New Testament is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the book of Acts. That's what you want. You want to go to the book of Acts, okay? Go to the book of Acts. And you are looking for Acts chapter 17. Go, go that way. You know, turn the page to your left, but you're going that way to the right. Okay? Pause this if you need to, okay? Turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Acts chapter 17. We want to look at verses 22 on to verse 34. Okay? Acts chapter 17, verses 22 on to verse 34. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. <laughs> uh, you're reading something that is not the authorized version of the scriptures. It says you are too religious, doesn't it? Yeah. Verse 23, for as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwells not in temples made with hands. That means, dear friend, you know that you know when you meet someone out there who wants to invite you to a church building, come to the church building. But no, no, no. Run away from someone who wants to bring you to a building. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't go to a church building. If you want to know who God is, here, get the scriptures and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal himself unto you through the scriptures. He'll do that to you, you know. He will. If you genuinely are seeking him, We'll get a little bit more into that here in a little bit. But you want to you wanna learn about the Lord Jesus Christ? Here you go. When you got somebody who sets up a prayer station and instead of inviting people to search the scriptures and pointing them onto the Lord Jesus Christ, no, they want to bring you onto a building. No. 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 Look at verse 24 again. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. That's what the Catholics, that's, you know, their God dwells in a church building. And their God is Satan, by the way. 
And just so you know, dear friend, Catholics are the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. Catholicism is Satan's religion. And the Catholic so-called church buildings are Satan's little houses. And you might have heard of these guys, the Jesuits. That is Satan's military army. If you have questions about that, there's a playlist on this channel that deals with the Jesuits. Go find that. Okay? Now let's continue. From verse 26 uh, and continuing. And hath made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. Yes. Okay. If you were to get cut. See, I, I have a cut right there. If you were to get cut. If you're black, brown, chartreuse, yellow, green, white, Republican, or Demokami, okay, if you get a cut in your flesh, what color is the blood going to be? It's going to be red. Yes, yes. But let's continue this verse, okay? And hath determined the times beforehand and the bounds of their habitation. Separation, distinction, keeping things separate. Guess what, dear friend? Like I said, if you and I were to cut, uh, get cut, our blood would read, bleed red. Yes, but guess what? Uh, there is such a thing as distinction. God is a God of distinction. He likes things over there where he put them, over there where he put them, right here where he put them. He likes to keep things distinct, separate, because God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is a God of variety. If he wasn't, then how come we don't all have the same breed of dog? How come you and I don't look alike, huh? How come there isn't only one kind of tree out there? How come there ain't only one kind of bird? Do you get the point? Okay? Do you get me? Good. Good. Does that offend you? Good. Good. Let's continue. That they should seek the Lord, if haply, they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, Godhead, okay, Trinity, my dear friend, is not in the scriptures. Trinity is a philosophic term created by uh, Catholics to explain their satanic... Okay, wrap your head around this. Three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Three persons that make just one God. Go ahead, roll, roll that in your in your head for a little bit. See if you can make sense of it. Yes, the rational mind can't, can it? No, because it is heresy. It is the Godhead, the Godhead. What's the Godhead? Spirit, soul, and body, okay? Let's continue, though. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. What does that mean? Graven images, which is condemned in the Ten Commandments, which, you know, those bad guys that I told you about, the Roman Catholics, they removed the thing about the graven images because as you probably have figured out, boy, there's a lot of statues, there's a lot of graven images. 
Who's that guy on the cross supposed to be? Who's that lady? Who's that dude? Right? Right. We are not supposed to make graven images of the Godhead. The Godhead. The fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the body. God the Father is the soul of the body. And the Spirit is the Holy Ghost. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It's just one God. Okay? Comprised of three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It's not that hard to figure out. Like I said, dear friend, go ahead and try to figure out the uh, the satanic trinity. But you know what you do? Just use this. Stay away from the Catholics. They're bad people. <laughs> Using your jargon, of course. Don't worry, we're going to get to that. Verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God went at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All men. That includes you. Okay? You might have heard of this guy by the name of Calvin that says there is a certain group that is elect to be saved and a certain group elect to go to hell. Right? That means that one is going to heaven no matter what they think or do or say or anything, what they believe, doesn't matter. They're going to heaven because they're elect. And there's another group, no matter what they do, they're going to hell. They're elect to go to hell. That is in a nutshell what is called Calvinism. And that, my dear friend, is what we call heresy. Satanic, evil, vile, wretched heresy. And let me... Uh, verify my point onto you, okay? This is going to offend you, but I want you, I don't want you to fail where I stand on this. Calvinism and Catholicism. <coughs> okay? Oh. oh, you haven't seen anyone act like that, huh? Well, just wait. But look at verse 30 again. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. What does that mean? He allowed it. Because, let's read. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. What does repent mean? Turning from something. Being sorrowful for something. The word repent actually is defined within the context, within the scripture, where it appears. You, you go on YouTube uh, long enough and you'll see people that say that says repentance means from going from unbelief to belief. There's problem with that. Hold your place here. Go to the book called the book of James. OK, there's a very big problem with just going from unbelief to belief. There's a very, very big problem with that. And you might ask what that is. OK. The book of James is directly after the book of Hebrews. Okay? Okay, you go that way, turning your pages, you know, to your left, but you're going that way until you find the book of James. Okay? And you want to look at a verse in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 19. Okay? James chapter 2, verse 19 which says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. There are those out there who say, all you have to do is simply believe. And that means you go to heaven. And the problem with that is it skips over what Paul just said right there. At the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth every all men everywhere to repent. What are you repenting of? We're, we're, we're going to get to that. Don't you worry. We're going to get to that. Okay? But there is a group of individuals who like to skip over scriptural repentance. 
and go straight to the belief. Just skip over this nasty thing and just go straight to belief. See, that is heresy. These types of people are excluding one of the most important things, which is according to God's standard. See, you come to the Lord on his terms, not your own. But we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Let's continue. Okay? Now let's reread verse 30 again. Okay? Because th th this, is, this is important. Okay? And the times of this ignorance God winked at. Incidentally, ignorance is not knowing better. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. All men, not some people who are just elect. Okay? Because, that's a very big because, he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, probably like a majority of you. And others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Oh, that sounds interesting. I gotta think on that for a while. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, you're saying he's God, but yet he died and he rose again from the grave. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Let me think about that and I'll get back to you when it's convenient for me. Right? Is that what you do? Huh? So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed. Among the which was Dionysus, the Aeropagate, and a woman named Damaris, and other and others with them. So, uh, from verse 32 on to verse 34, you see mockers, those who are slothful or curious, and then those who just, whoa, which one are you in there? Are you the first one, a mocker? <laughs> or are you one who's trying to find the middle ground? You, you, you know, your option C, right? A or B. I want option C. What is it with you? Oh, let me think about on that for a while. And let me get back to you when I have the time. Yeah. The time's almost up there, boy. Girl. Or are you like, wait a minute, oh boy, who is this man, who is this man, now turn into your authorized version of the scriptures, okay, remember the book of Isaiah that we were in, go back there, okay, go back to the book of Isaiah, Okay, you want to find Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Okay, Isaiah chapter 45. You want to locate verses 5, and we are going to read on to verse 10 in Isaiah chapter 45. Okay, but like I said, if you have the authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along. Make sure I ain't pulling the wool over your eyes. And if you do not have one, if you like, for for example, have a an IV, don't even waste your time trying to follow along. Seriously, I'm sorry. The NIV will do you no good. No good. You want the authorized version of the scriptures. 
Now, Isaiah 45, verses 5 on to verse 10. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let the righteous spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his Maker. Listen, dear friend, whether you want to believe it, accept it, or whatever it is with you, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, made you. You are a created being. Okay? You were created by God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Get over it. You didn't evolve from a sniveling piece of snot that came out of water. You did not evolve from a monkey. That, dear friend, is absolute stupidity. As I have often heard it say, said, it's a fairy tale for grown-ups. It's absurd. You, you like to think I'm crazy because I know that God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, created the heaven and the earth and all things therein. And the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, tell us that. You call me nuts? No, you, you're the one crazy that thinks that nothing from nothing came from came something. That all of a sudden, millions and trillions of years ago, nothing went boom! A big boom happened. You're, 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 you're the one who has problems, dear friend. Right now, at this point, your problems... Wow. But we're addressing those. We're addressing those. So, let's, let's continue. Verse 9 and 10. Woe unto him that striveth with his Maker... Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that formeth it, What makest thou, or thy work? He hath no hands. Hmm. I've known people who were born without limbs. Why was I made this way? It's your parents' fault, right? No. No, the Lord could have given you all things that you need. And he has a purpose in creating. And it's according to his desire. Who are you to say, why have you made me this? And that doesn't mean that it's not your fault for doing the things you do. No, not at all. No, you are at fault. For the things you do. See, that's, that's one of your big problems, see. You like to blame other people. You like to point the finger. You like to make excuses, don't you? The serpent did give me of the tree and I did eat. You know, you heard of Adam and Eve. I know you have, right? Yeah. But let's continue. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? You blame your mother and father? If you have a father? If you have a mother? It's their fault? Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go now to Isaiah 46, the very next chapter, okay? The very next chapter, we're going to read verses 9 on to verse 13. Okay? Isaiah 46, verses 9 on to verse 13. Remember the former things of old. I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring from the end, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted, that are far from righteousness. Trust in your own heart, huh? You're a fool. You're a fool if you trust in your own heart. Hey, on your own time, right here, here, get a pen, write this down. Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah chapter 17, write it down. Verses 9 and 10. And you go look that up on your own time. There, there's your homework for you. Okay? Verse 13. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. You might be thinking, why, why are we looking at this? There's only one God. And the God that I'm declaring unto you is the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there is one God, only one God. But what about Jesus Christ, right? Like I said, you most definitely have heard of the Satanic Trinity, which is blasphemy. Not true, okay? Go to the book of Genesis, all the way towards the beginning of the scriptures, and you want to find... It. Okay, look. Here's the scriptures. Just open it up to the very beginning. That's what Genesis means, the beginning, okay? Uh, find the book of Genesis and go to Genesis chapter 22, Okay? Genesis chapter 22. You want to locate verse 8. Abraham and Isaac, which is the, this um, telling in Genesis chapter 22, which you could read on your own time, is what we call a type. A type. You look that up on your own time. Very important verse here that we want us that we want to look at. Genesis chapter 22 verse 8. Okay? Again, if you are trying to follow along with something that is not the authorized version of the scripture, you're going to see a very subtle difference here. Genesis chapter 22 verse 8, just one verse. Look at this. Look at it. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Now, if you're reading something that is not the authorized version of the scriptures, you right away know it's like, whoa, wait a second, mine says something different. Yeah, um, look, look, dear friend. If you're not reading the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, you are reading something that was given to you by Rome. Roman Catholicism, the enemy of Jesus Christ. Okay? You have a corrupt, fake Bible given to you by the Vatican. Your enemy. Okay? Like I said, 
I have several several videos on this channel where we talk about the authorized version of the scriptures. Also, there is somebody by the name of Brian Denlinger that you can look into about this, okay? But look at that verse now, dear friend. Beg your pardon. Look at that verse. And Abraham said, My son, talking to his son Isaac, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Will provide himself. Himself. God himself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let's look a little deeper into this. Go back now to Isaiah. Okay? We're going through this process like this so you can clearly see this. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. We are going to read verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is giving, is given. Talking about Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading, okay? And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Note that that's a capital W there. Counselor, also capital, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Look at verse 6 where it says the everlasting father. And if you went with me to Genesis chapter 22 verse 8. It says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together himself and look at verse 6 in Isaiah chapter 9 everlasting father what does this mean what does this mean go now to the New Testament close your scriptures okay and open it somewhere towards the right side of you, okay? And you want the book of 1 Timothy, okay? You want the book of 1 Timothy. I actually almost opened right to the place where we are going to look at. 1 Timothy chapter 3 is what you want. <laughs> Verse 16. 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God will provide himself a lamb. The everlasting father. God was manifest in the flesh. If you're not reading the authorized version of the scriptures, it says he. Perhaps. He. Who's he? God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. A Gentile is someone who is not Jewish, which probably a majority of you are. Believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. 
God was manifest in the flesh. Now, go to the Gospel of John. John. Okay. That's the fourth Gospel account. Okay. Get your New Testament. Turn your pages to the left, but you're going to the right. Okay. Go to the book of John. Go to the book of John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 24. Actually, I beg your pardon. We will read John chapter 8, verses 23, on to verse 24. John chapter 8, verses 23, and verse 24. And he said unto them, being Jesus, said unto the Pharisees and stuff, and to the people, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And let's read verse 25 while we're at it. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. From the beginning. There is one God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father. You might have heard it said that, well, he never claimed to be, he never said, I am God, or I am the Father. Go to John 14 now, but then the same book. John 14, verses 1 and 2, verse 11. John 14, verses 1 and 2, verse 11. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you know, and the way ye know, excuse me. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, dear friend, did Muhammad ever say he could save you, that he was the way? That he knew for certain where he was going? What about Buddha? Hmm? Ask a Catholic if they know for sure whether they're going to go to heaven. Ask a Mormon. Ask a Jehovah's Witness. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Stay away from them guys. Them guys are woo -hoo, crazy. Tell me something, friend. I'm going to reckon that you don't like exclusivity. Exclusive statements. Let's look at one, shall we? Verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That, dear friend, is called an exclusive statement, excluding everything else. Jesus Christ, right there, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's an exclusive statement that not Muhammad made. Buddha did not make it. Okay? Catholics, 
Like I said, go and ask a Catholic whether or not they know for certain they're going to heaven when they die. I rest my case. Okay? Verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Father. You know. God. One God. Our Father. Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Hast thou not known me, Philip? What does that mean? That means that Jesus Christ is the Father. Like I said unto you, dear friend, when in John chapter 8, verse 24, it says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And he says here in verse 9 in John 14, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Talking about the soul. The Godhead, remember? You remember we kind of briefly touched on that? Okay? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Jesus Christ is God the Father, my friend. He came here. He was manifest in the flesh to die for our sins, according to the scriptures, and shed his blood upon the cross to cleanse you of your sins. He came to be the king of the Jews, and he is the king of the Jews. And he offered the kingdom unto the Jewish people. But they didn't want the kingdom at the time. And he went and did what he did on the cross. Then he offered the gospel unto the people of Israel. They didn't want that, and they rejected that. And it has come unto us, the Gentile, to make the Jew jealous, to bring the Jewish people back unto their God. The Jewish people are the apple of God's eye. And you probably hear all the time that it's the Jews' fault, right? For everything, right? Yeah, you probably hear that, don't you? No, it's the Catholics, not the Jewish people. So, Jesus Christ is God the Father. Why did he, why was God manifest in the flesh? Go to Isaiah now, go back to that book of Isaiah that we looked at. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Okay? I, I do beg your pardon, dear friend. One second. Isaiah 53. This is known as the suffering servant. Okay? And this is talking about a man, not a nation. Okay? We're going to read this whole chapter. It's very important. Okay? Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now this is specifically talking about Jesus Christ. And you will see this. 
For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. And unto you. Is Jesus Christ, God our Father, beautiful unto you? Or is he just a good teacher, a good social reformer? He is despised and rejected of men. That's you. I'm not talking to you, Church of the Living God, obviously. That's you. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Those who hate me love death. Those who hate me love death. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. What is a transgression? Sin. What is sin? going against God's law. Which, guess what, friend? You have. You do. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And we, like sheep, have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. You want option C, don't you? You're looking for uh, anything. But Jesus Christ, God our Father, right? You're willing to entertain Islam, Buddhism, Catholicism, Moronism, the Jehovah's Witnesses, even Kabbalah. But no. No, this one they call Christ, who is God the Father. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When Jesus Christ, God the Father, went to the cross and was nailed on the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and shed his blood, he took your iniquities on himself. cleanse you. He did that for you. Let's continue. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He brought he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. They held him in like a prison before he was crucified. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. And for the transgression of my people was he stricken. My people is a reference to the Jewish people. But see, we Gentiles who are not Jewish are grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. Because as I told you, the Jewish people are the apple of God's eye. This time coming after we called the church of the living God, wrongly called Christians, once we are caught up, taken out of here, which is wrongly called the pre-tribulation rapture, it is called the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble, erroneously, erroneously called the Great Tribulation. That's a description, not a title. Okay? We will be caught up. If you're not saved, 
you're going to be going through what is known as the time of Jacob's trouble. That's why you and I are talking right now. Okay? Verse 9, And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Jesus Christ is God the Father. He could not sin. He couldn't sin. He was perfect. He did what you and I couldn't at our best state do. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. What is vanity? Meaningless, empty, useless. He kept the law of God, the Ten Commandments, you know. He kept it perfectly. You can't do that. I can't do that. Even if you were to lock yourself in a cave, you still couldn't do it. Only one could. He who is God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one who could do that. Let's continue. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Transgressors. Look very quickly at Isaiah 52, where uh, verse 13 on to verse 15, look at that very quickly. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled, and be very high. King. As many were astoned at thee, his visage, his face, was so marred more than any man, and, the, and his form more than the sons of men. He shall sprinkle many nations. The king shall shut their mouth at him. For that which he had been, for that which had not been told them, shall they see, and that which they had not heard, they shall consider. Jesus Christ went to the cross bare naked. Okay, um, if you look into historical accounts of Roman crucifixion, most of you are aware of the Catholic Jesus that is on the cross with the loincloth around his midsection. Historically, and you can do this on your own time, check me out, they were crucified naked. His visage, look at that, verse 14 in Isaiah 52, his visage was so marred more than any man. It says in the Gospels that they ripped the beard out of his face. They beat him. They smote him, and his form more than the sons of men, his body. You couldn't even tell you were looking at a man on that cross. Gangrenous, whooped, beaten. Unfortunately, there are probably a lot of you that saw that blasphemous Roman Catholic movie, The Passion of the Christ, directed by that weird guy, Mel Gibson. That depiction in that grotesque movie, Hollywood movie, isn't even half what the reality of the situation was. Are you rolling that around in your head a little bit? What are you looking at there, dear friend? Why would he do that? Go to the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews, which is within the New Testament. Okay? 
within the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to look at one verse. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Or oh, excuse me, and without shedding of blood is no remission. I beg your pardon. And you could cross-reference that with the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. He shed his blood on the cross. was beaten and mangled to where you didn't even know that there was a man on that cross bare naked he was God he is God the father that was on that cross why did he do that oh I I'm quite sure many of you um, there was a certain book in the scriptures that tells you that God so loved, right? We're not going to look at that. We're not going to look at that. I want you to go now all the way here. Take take your scriptures, okay? Open it up to the book of Genesis again. Genesis chapter 6. Why did the why did God the Father go to the cross? Why? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Let's read verses 6 and 7 while we're here, shall we? And it repenteth the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now you see the word repented. Repented. These people who are evil called easy believism, heretics, they like to say, they like to attack the repented. And even some of you say, what, was God a sinner that he had to repent? No. Look at that verse, okay? Look at that verse very closely. Let's read this really, okay? Go with me, okay? Come on. I double dog, dare ya. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. Watch this. And it grieved him at his heart. Grieved him. What is grieving? Sorrow. 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 And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Look at verse 5 again. And God saw that wickedness that and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You might be saying to me, Well, that's not today. We're getting better. We're more enlightened. We're more this, we're more that. Um, news flash for you there, genius. Uh, if you're in my country, America. Explain to me Black Lives Matter. Explain to me Antifa. Explain to me, you, who are wearing a face mask, want to get violent with someone who opposes that stupidity. Hi, I do. 
Oh, I do. Why does it? Why does violence or hatred arise in your heart when you see someone who's using their brain? You know, that's that lump three foot above your buttocks. Okay, about the face mask. Why is it that you have hatred in your heart? Why is it that you want to get violent? Hmm? Why is that? You think we're evolving, getting better? Let's say it the scriptures. Go to the book of Romans. Book of Romans, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans. Chapter 3. Well, I, I, I don't do this. I'm better than that guy. Yeah, I'm not perfect. Or, yeah, I, I don't believe I'm a sinner at all. Let's say it the scriptures. Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. See, this is what, remember I mentioned to you about there was something that these people called easy believism heretics? Like they, they like to just skip over? This is what they like to skip over. As it is written... When it says, as it is written, that means that it is elsewhere within the scriptures, which means it's crossing what we call dispensational lines. You want to learn about that? Go to the basics on this channel, okay? Or look up Brian Denlinger if you wish, okay? But it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Oh, I help an old lady across the street. Oh, I give money to this. Oh, I, I don't feel any... Jesus Christ was butchered, manhandled, beaten up, bloodied, bare naked on the cross for you. And you think you're a good person, huh? Guess what? You're not a good person. You ain't a good person. It doesn't matter what you do. You're not good. You can't save yourself. You are not good. Get over yourself. Well, I haven't done this. I'm better than that guy. That's pride, dear friend. What did we read in Proverbs chapter 8? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy? You're not good. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm not good either. Let's continue. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues, they have used deceit. That's grave, okay? The poison of asps is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You like to cuss? You bitter? Well, it's not offensive to me. Um, it's offensive to the Lord. Who hung a mangled, bloody mess, bare naked, on the cross to pay a debt that you owe him that you can never pay. Their feet is swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. You think you've got peace, huh? What, if you just get a little bit more money? Huh? You just get that right girlfriend or boyfriend, right? You get that fancy car, right? Right? You get that high-paying, secular job. It's 
It's going to go up like a puff there, dear friend. You're not a good person. You're not a good person. Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah chapter 64. Verses 6 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 64. Verse 6 and verse 7. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Um, a filthy rag here? That's a menstrual cloth. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. You're in trouble, friend. You're in big, big trouble. Go to Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Scriptures. Take your thumbs, open them up somewhere in the middle. You should come close to the Psalms, okay? Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse 17. Actually, Verses 16 and verse 17. Excuse me, two verses. Verses 16 and 17. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, Thou wilt not despise. Your self-righteousness has got to go, dear friend. Your self-righteousness has got to go. You are not a good person. You cannot save yourself. You deserve to go to hell. Jesus Christ, God the Father, died on the cross, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, shed his blood to make an atonement for you. And you're going to reject that? If he was hanging there naked? You won't get what's coming to you, friend. Go to Luke now, uh, go to Romans chapter 3 again. Romans chapter 3 again. Now we will be reading verses 21 on to verse 26. Luke, um, Luke, Romans chapter 3, verses 21 on to verse 26. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God. There are those out there who say that repenting is a work. The works that are being addressed here are the works of the law. Dear friend, you cannot be fixed unless you know that you're broken. 
that's not a work. And those who dispute that, they're like you, but they just claim religion. What does that mean? They're lost. <gasps> Let's continue this. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Remember we mentioned about Calvin? About elect and non-elect? Dear, dear, dear friend, um, if anyone starts talking to you about elect and non-elect as far as salvation is concerned, take your little digits, your feet, and run away from them quickly. That's Calvinism. That's heresy. Okay? Let's continue. For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Yes, all have sinned. Even you. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. The difference between you and me, I'm a saved sinner. You're a lost sinner. The difference between you and me is I have God the Father living within me. Your father is the devil. Satan, the little G-God of this world. And you're no good, friend. See, these people in these church buildings will tell you that you are a good person. That's not what the scripture says. Look at Romans again. Verse 12. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You ain't good. You can't save yourself. All your righteousnesses are a menstrual cloth, filthy rags. What are you going to do? Let's continue. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. What does that mean? Ephesians. Go to the book of Ephesians now. Chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's God's grace that saves you, dear friend, not a belief in your head. That's part of it, absolutely, absolutely, but it's God's grace that saves you. Not all of a sudden one day you hear, just believe, and it's like, I believe, okay, then I'm saved. No. You have to come to the Lord on his terms, repentance towards God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You're not good. You can't save yourself. God's grace is there. For by grace are you saved, through faith. And who saves you? God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Timothy Chapter 2, 2 Timothy, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 now. Verses 3 under verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3. Excuse me, I, I led you in the wrong direction. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 
First Timothy. I apologize, dear friend. I wrote down the wrong notes. First Timothy chapter 2, okay? Sorry about that. I apologize. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The man Christ Jesus, one mediator, that's not Mary, that's not Pope Francis, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, that's not Catholicism, that's not your church building, no, the man Christ Jesus, God the Father, one man, he is the answer. Can't save yourself. You're scum. Okay. Then, what should I do? What should I do? Romans chapter 10. Go to Romans chapter 10. But see, all this of learning that you are not good, knowing that you cannot save yourself, that every all your righteousnesses are as filthy rags what is the point of that what is the point of telling you that very simple go to romans chapter 10 and hold your place there but i want to quote a verse to you in second corinthians chapter 7 second corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world. Godly sorrow. You've sinned against God. You're not good. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. In the sight of God, you are filthy, wretched. Now, the righteousness outside of the law, God's righteousness is available to you. For by grace are you saved. What must you do? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 on to verse 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ask him to save you, dear friend. Now see, these easy believism heretics say you don't have to do that. You know why they tell you that? Because they themselves are lost. And see, dear friend, here's, here, here's, 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 the, here's the thing about that. You need to repent of your self-righteousness thinking that you're good. You need to repent of yourself and turn unto the Lord. You're not good and you cannot save yourself. 
You believe on the man. The one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Believe on him, what he did for you. Coming to him. Repentant of yourself. Remember, dear friend, God the Father died on a cross and shed his blood on a cross, bare naked, beaten to a bloody pulp for you. Because you're not good. Because you can't save yourself. It's called godly sorrow. Believe on him and ask him to save you. Call upon the name of the Lord. You being broken of yourself and calling on the name of the Lord, that is the ultimate show of humility. Which is why there are many out there who preach against it and call that heresy. Because they're still suffering. They are still self-righteous. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go now to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And if you have called upon the name of the Lord, coming to him as a broken, contrite sinner, trusting on him, what he has done for you, and asking him to save you. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. The wrath is uh, appointed us, who is the us? Those who are saved. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And upon being saved, something happens. <laughs> A lot of things happen. But something happens. Something happens to you when you are saved. When you are saved, okay, when you get saved, if you get saved, when you come to the Lord on His terms, not your own. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Actually, we should read 11 on to verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed, with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Once you truly get saved and born again, you are sealed. That means that God the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, seals you, dwells within you. He lives within you. That means you're going to heaven, dear friend. You cannot lose it. 
because we have a, obtained an inheritance, heaven. And we are predestinated, meaning we're going to heaven. You cannot lose your salvation once you are truly saved. God seals you. You are his. You are bought with a price. And upon being sealed until the day of redemption, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 21. Something going to change when you get saved. See, now you might be, you probably might not have made it this far. But if you have, if you have, and you are truly saved, born again, God lives within you. You're going to heaven. Something's going to change. Not by you. Let's read. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 14 on to verse 21. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one die for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, God can't sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let me ask you something. If you're using a fake Bible, is in him, if you've followed me this long, is in him, in your Bible? What does that mean? When God the Father comes and dwells within those of you of the Church of the Living God, there's going to be some house cleaning. Things going to change. It's inevitable. It just happens because you have got the Father living within you. Some things go right away. Yes. Something, because see, you and I are, are sinners. Oh, beg your pardon. Saved sinners, yes, but sinners nonetheless, and we tend to be stubborn. Some things take some time. Other things, muy rapido, see. And um, let me tell you, dear friend, let me tell you something. If you don't heed this warning, Let me tell you where you're going to end up. Let me tell you where you're going to end up. Now, we who are saved and born again, okay, we're going to go to what is called the judgment seat of Christ, where our works are going to be tried for our rewards in heaven, okay? In Ephesians, we saw that we are eternally secure today. We're going to heaven one way or the other, okay? And you're going to have changes. It just happens. It just happens, okay? Something's going to change around here, okay? But see, we who are saved, we are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. 
In the same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The we and all, talking about the church of the living God, the body of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, for our rewards in heaven, not for our salvation. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The fear of the Lord. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. And um, let me let me just warn you again, dear friend, if you reject this, if you want to hang on to your pride, thinking, oh, that guy with the beautiful picture on the wall there um, says that I'm not good, that I'm going to hell, I don't want to believe it. Away with such a man. Well, here, Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 and 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Okay? And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, you reject the Lord Jesus Christ because he doesn't force you. But if you reject him, you're dead in your trespasses and sins. When in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, which you are doing if you are not saved, according to the prince of the power of the air, who is that? Satan. You're not saved, he's your father. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that's you. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I used to be lost just like you, but by grace am I saved. The Lord broke me of myself, and I knew I wasn't good. And I knew that there was only one, the man, Christ Jesus, who could save me. And I believe on him. I trust on him. And I called on him and begged him to save me. That's a, See, that's the difference. See. But if you reject the gospel one time, you're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. You're a child of disobedience. And turn now to 1 Samuel. That's in the Old Testament. Verse 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Verse 23. 1 Samuel. Verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. You are your own idol. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. You're your own king, aren't you? Yeah. 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 See, where you're going to end up, dear friend, if you reject this, where you're going to end up, go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. Revelation 
Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. See, we who are saved at the judgment seat of Christ, our works are going to be tried for our rewards in heaven. We're going to heaven, but our rewards are in heaven are what are uh, going to be accounted for our works. Right here, it's just your works in order to get in, not by grace. Grace is there, yes. But let me let me sum it up to you this way. Dear friend, at the great white throne of judgment, you have no hope. You have no hope. Let's continue. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is hell. The lake of fire says the lake of fire, says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's the second death. That's your inevitable outcome. Go to Mark in the Gospel accounts. Mark. Mark chapter 9. You will hear people talk about the myth of hell. That hell is not a real place. Mark chapter 9, verses 42 on to verse 50. Here's where you're going, friend. You want to be stubborn? You want to be idolatrous? Hmm? You want to reject the truth? See, we, the church of the living God, are getting call, uh, caught up, getting out of here. And then it's going to begin the time of Jacob's trouble right now time for you to get saved because once we're gone that's the time of Jacob's trouble and the mark of the beast is going to be in that time if you take that mark you're going to hell there's no ifs ands or buts to inevitably be cast into the lake of fire what's that going to be like let's look Mark chapter 9, verses 42 on to verse 50. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were cast about his neck, and he be and were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. He's not talking about literally cutting off your hand. Okay? He's not talking about that. He's talking about throwing things away from you that ought not to be there. Getting right with the Lord. Uh, hey, you're, you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures? Go ahead and read your verse 44 for me. Oh yeah, that's right. It's not in there, is it? <clears throat> Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You might have heard here on YouTube of this. I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to name someone. His name is um, uh, the Vigilant Christian. Uh, his first name is Mario. Um, not my brother from Croatia. He, he says that hell is not, you don't burn forever. 
he believes in what is called soul annihilationism? No. Where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. Are you touching things you shouldn't be touching? Are your feet running to places where they shouldn't be running? You need to run to the Lord in godly sorrow, broken of your self-righteousness, son, daughter. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and their fire, and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith well ye, will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. And you got to remember there, dear friend, this hell was not made for you. One verse in Matthew chapter 25, which is in the Gospels toward the front of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say, then shall, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. Dear friend, I understand that uh, you as a lost man or a lost woman, or even a hairy tick, you're not going to probably make it this far. The chances on that, especially today happening, are slim. But if by some bizarre chance, some miracle, by some grace that you have made it this far, unless you get saved, you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble because our time, the Church of the Living God, our time is coming to a rapid end. We're going to be called up and you're going to be left with these monsters of Catholicism. If you don't get saved, you're going to go to hell and you are going to burn. And you are going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever and you will not burn up and it will not stop. Repent of your self-righteousness. You're not good. <laughs> Let the sorrow of God flood you. and Come to him as a broken, contrite sinner. Trust on the man, Christ Jesus, for what he did for you on the cross. And humble yourself and call upon the name of the Lord and get saved before it's too late. Because let me tell you something. Without him, you're going to hell. But you're there. It's too late. Because I'll tell you something there, friend. Those who are in hell right now, my mother, people you know, they don't want you down there. So, if you have any questions, if you've made it this far, feel free to contact me with the email that's on this channel. Thank you so much for watching, if you do.